Greetings, fellow comet chasers. As October unfolds, we have a new comet discovery. Updates on C2023 P1, Nishimura, and 12P slash Ponsbrooks, and of course the chance to observe this month's bright comets, 2P slash Enka, 103P slash Hartley, and C2020 V2, ZTF. There are a lot of ways to enjoy comets, including taking images, but here we focus on visual observation using everything from the naked eye to large telescopes. Now, you might wonder, with the myriad of sources available, what else sets comet chasing apart? The answer lies in the expertise and passion of the astronomer Greg Crinklaw. Not just the mind behind the renowned Sky Tools software, Greg's many years as a visual comet observer have led him to a crucial realization. While others focus solely on a comet's magnitude, Greg recognized the crucial roles of the coma diameter and its degree of condensation in determining a comet's visibility in the eyepiece. This insight birthed an innovative algorithm, a tool that calculates the visibility of a comet whether through a telescope, binoculars, or even the naked eye. This algorithm powers the predictions on our webpage and this channel. So, when we declare a comet is observable through a 6-inch telescope, Trust that it's not a mere guess or based only on the magnitude alone. It's backed by calculations you won't find elsewhere. A quick caveat, though. While our predictions on this channel are precise, they can't be tailored for specific telescopes, locations, or light pollution levels. For that, you would need to enter your details into Sky Tools. Our calculations are based on generic telescopes equipped with standard eyepieces, and for the sake of these predictions, we're assuming country skies, where stars as faint as sixth magnitude are visible to the unaided observer. For those familiar, that's a Bortle 4 to 5 on the light pollution scale. So, if you're under city lights, you might want to take a drive to darker skies. And if you are under very dark skies, you may be able to see these comets in smaller apertures. Let's dive into our first topic, a fresh comet discovery. As we were preparing this video, we were eagerly awaiting the formal announcement of this new comet, complete with a reliable orbit and designation. Until October 2nd, it was only listed on the possible comet confirmation page of the Minor Planet Center, identified by a code rather than a true designation. Around the world, observers were hard at work, gathering astrometry to refine its orbit. This process can be a bit of a waiting game as we need the comet to traverse a significant arc in the sky to fully unveil its orbit. Here's what we know so far. The comet's perihelion distance, Q, is roughly 1 AU. It appears to have arrived from the Oort cloud, although JPL indicates a possible orbital period in the range of 300 years. Its perihelion is on October 16th. Its preliminary orbit indicates a consistent brightness until late October, after which it will commence a gradual dimming. Early accounts describe it as large and diffuse, strongly suggesting that a sizable telescope will be necessary for a visual sighting, and only once the moonlight recedes. This comet serves as a good example of the pitfalls of relying solely on magnitude to gauge a comet's visibility in the eyepiece. From Michael Matiazzo, we have a report detailing 10 stacked 30-second exposures captured on October 1, 2023. Using a C11 Rasa F2.2 astrograph from Swan Hill, Victoria, Australia. The image reveals a diffuse coma spanning two arc minutes with a total magnitude of 13.0. Taras Pristavsi describes the comet as bright with a magnitude of 12.7. It's fast moving, showcasing a large and diffuse coma that's 2.5 arc minutes in diameter. He told us that, I always search for the possibility to capture something interesting and unusual in the world of comets. I imaged this object in the short period between local astronomical twilight and moon rise. Well, this object impressed me a lot as I expected to see a 16 mag object, but it was far much brighter. That's why I observe comets, they can impress. For those planning their observations, this comet is an early evening object located in Ophiuchus. It sits fairly high in the western sky post-twilight. The southern hemisphere is preferred. This comet may be challenging even in 16-inch or larger telescopes. A dark sight will be required, full dark adaption, and be sure to use a wide-field eyepiece. Look for a diffuse glow using averted vision. I should note, however, that these predictions are based on the two observations above. 
As more observations are reported, our predictions may need to be adjusted. Our next celestial highlight, the comet 2P Anka, was a standout last month. We took a deep dive into the history of this special comet in our September video. If you happen to miss it, now's your chance to catch this comet. But don't delay, because after this month it'll be another three years before this comet graces our skies in such favorable conditions, especially for those using smaller scopes. 2P Anki starts October in Leo, showcasing a three-arc minute coma at magnitude 8.9, as the month progresses, expect it to brighten by approximately one magnitude, transitioning into Virgo by the time we bid October farewell. On October 22nd, 2P Enki will reach its perihelion, culminating in a peak brightness of magnitude 3.7 by the month's end. If you've been meaning to catch a glimpse of this celestial traveler, 2P Enki will be visible in small telescopes during the morning hours through the morning of October 12th. After this period, only those equipped with larger telescopes will be able to spot it. Now, for those wondering about the best approach to observing a comet like 2P Enki in a small telescope, here's a quick guide. To find the comet, you'll need its exact position for the night in question. Most astronomical software can fetch the latest orbital elements to provide this information. Use your telescope's lowest power eyepiece and scan the skies for a slightly hazy, small, bright spot. This distinct appearance should differentiate it from the more defined stars. Ensure your eyes are fully adapted to the dark, as this will significantly enhance your viewing experience. And a little trick, use the averted vision technique. This involves looking slightly to the side of the object you're trying to observe. By doing so, you might catch the larger haze enveloping the bright spot, and while you're at it, see if you can discern its asymmetrical nature. Observing comets, like 2P Enka, is a rewarding experience, blending the thrill of discovery with the beauty of a star field that you might not have ever visited in your telescope otherwise. So remember to take a moment to take in the stars too, looking for interesting patterns and colors. Our next comet is 103P Hartley. As October unfolds, you'll find 103P Hartley in Auriga, shining at a magnitude of 9.7 and boasting a 3.5 arc-minute coma, you may be able to glimpse a short tail using averted vision. As the days pass, it will dim by approximately 0.6 magnitudes, with the comet transitioning into the constellation Cancer by the close of the month. Perihelion will occur in mid-October, and on October 12th, this comet will make a relatively close approach to the Earth, coming within 0.4 AU. Predictions suggest that it will peak at a magnitude of 9.5 in the early days of October. 103P graces our morning skies and is within reach of small telescopes. This comet is accessible from all latitudes, with its prime viewing window falling between the mornings of October 8th to 12th, just before dawn. C2020 V2, ZTF, might not have made headlines with claims of dazzling brightness or a close approach to the sun, but as with all comets, it carries its own unique story. Originating from the distant Oort cloud, this comet took its solitary pass by the Sun staying at a distance 2.2 times farther than Earth's orbit. After reaching its perihelion in early May 2023, it embarked on its long voyage back to the outer realms of our solar system, never to grace our skies again. As Greg often reminds me, every comet holds significance. These celestial bodies are remnants from our solar system's formative years, and once C-2025-2, ZTF, fades from telescopic view, it will be a sight lost to history. For those keen on observing this fleeting visitor, the comet will be visible in the mornings before dawn until the 21st, best observed through a 6-inch, 15-centimeters telescope. Starting October in the Constellation Sculptor, it displays a 3.5 arc-minute coma at magnitude 10.1. However, as the days progress, expect a dimming by approximately 0.8 magnitudes, with the comet transitioning into Phoenix. For the best viewing experience, early October is prime time, especially for those in the Southern Hemisphere. Observers in the North might catch a glimpse of it, but it will be positioned low on the Southern horizon and may require larger telescopes. After the night of November 4th and 5th, only those with large aperture telescopes will stand a chance at spotting it. 
C-2023 P1, Nishimura, has been a topic of keen interest for many in the astronomical community and beyond. This month, it starts in Virgo with a magnitude of 6.8, in a close conjunction to the Sun. As the month progresses, it's expected to fade swiftly, transitioning into Centaurus. The best chance to catch a glimpse of this comet, especially in moderate-sized telescopes, will be from the southern hemisphere, looking to the eastern sky before dawn in the last few days of the month. A brief appearance in the evening sky in mid-September had observers at the edge of their seats. Its journey brought it to perihelion just 0.22 AU from the sun on September 17th. Despite reaching an apparent magnitude close to plus two, its proximity to the sun's glare made it a challenging target. Piotr Guzik managed a naked eye sighting on September 8th, estimating its magnitude at 4.7. But this was an extreme observation under excellent conditions made by an experienced observer. Even in telescopes, it appeared as no more than a fuzzball without any tail. But when imaged with a camera, the comet's tail stretched an impressive 3.5 degrees. Although images from this time were spectacular, this comet was never all that special in the eyepiece. Notably, it was captured in the coronagraph of the stereo spacecraft, holding its form without signs of disintegration. This is a movie made from stereo images, but it is important to understand what we are looking at. This camera is designed to reveal the low-contrast solar wind as it blows away from the sun. The comet showing off a full tail appears near the top and moves down to the left. It is fascinating to see the gas from the comet blown along with the solar wind as the comet moves. Notice that, like all comets, the tail points away from the sun as the gas and dust is blown by the solar wind. Unlike what most people assume, it is not a trail left behind it like a meteor or a plane's contrail. The direction of the tail is quite independent of its direction of motion. Think of the sun like a big fan blowing air at the comet. It is this solar wind that creates the tail. But why so much buzz around C-2023 P1? The initial fervor was fueled by its discovery by an amateur, a feat becoming increasingly rare in this age of advanced surveys, and because it was fairly bright. Its close sun approach and predictions of it reaching bright naked eye magnitudes further stoked the flames of excitement. However, many overlooked the crucial detail of its orbital geometry and its position in our sky, which kept it too close to the sun's glare when at its brightest. In essence, the anticipation surrounding this comet outpaced the reality from the get-go. Our predictions here and on the comet chasing page have been spot on, indicating C-2023 P1, Nishimura, as a prime target for binoculars and small telescopes in the first half of September. While it did grace us with many breathtaking images, the hype that suggested it would be easily visible to the naked eye was overblown, and we knew that all along. Comets of this nature grace our skies every few years, reminding us of the wonders and occasional unpredictability of our solar system. That doesn't mean we weren't excited too. But on this channel, we think all comets are awesome and worthy of going out to view or to image. Lastly, let's have an update on the ongoing journey of 12P slash Ponsbrooks. This Halley-like comet, with potential observations dating back to the year 245, is on its course toward perihelion on April 21, 2024. In late July, the comet underwent a significant increase in brightness, brightening by five magnitudes in a single day. This outburst produced an atypical coma shape, characterized by a pronounced notch, which persisted for several weeks. While its integrated magnitude has remained fairly stable, Mike Kelly reported a smaller outburst of one magnitude that occurred between September 22nd and 25th, 2023. This image by Greg Crinklaw shows the comet a few days after the most recent outburst. Greg tells me that the continued asymmetric coma blows his mind. He has yet to hear a proper explanation for it, especially when it has persisted even while the comet nucleus rotates. As October unfolds, 12P slash Ponsbrooks is located in the constellation Hercules at magnitude 11.4 with a 5 arc minute coma. It's anticipated to brighten by approximately 0.7 magnitudes by the end of the month. However, the recent brightness increase has introduced some variability in its magnitude. The minimum telescope aperture to detect it reasonably 
is also uncertain at this time. The comet's detectability is intrinsically linked to the size and degree of condensation of its coma. Recent reports have shown a wide range of coma diameters, from 0.3 to 14 arc minutes, and magnitude estimates between 11.5 and 16. This inconsistency in measurements, often a result of not accounting for the full extent of the coma, underscores the challenges in making accurate comet estimates. So what aperture telescope will reveal this comet? Greg says that he thinks it may be visible in a 12-inch or larger telescope, but that's currently just an estimate. Users of smaller instruments are encouraged to give it a try. Please report the aperture of your telescope if you manage to spot it in the comments below. As 12P slash Ponsbrook silently glides among the stars, edging ever closer to its perihelion, each observation becomes a chapter in its astronomical story. Our channel is your front row seat to this unfolding spectacle. With every twist and turn 12P slash Ponsbrook's takes, we'll be right here, capturing those moments and sharing them with you. Who knows what the next observation will reveal? What if you were the first to spot a bright outburst? It could happen. Until next month, happy comet chasing everyone.